Hi everyone, this is Gosu Dad, and welcome to a review of my second game in Season 6 of the Blizzard Online Ladder, Chaos Chrome vs. Q Phoenix, Zerg vs. Terran on the map in Tombed Valley. Hey everyone, this is Gosu Dad, and welcome back once again to that wonderful map that we know and love, the four-player map in Tombed Valley. This time playing Terran vs. Zerg, or Zerg vs. Terran instead of TVT. Chaos Chrome playing Zerg in the red in the upper right hand corner. And in the cross map position is myself playing Terran in the blue. And once again, just like that last game that we just walked through, uh, Q Phoenix vs. Brad, Chaos Chrome, this is his first time playing Zerg at least in the latter, or at least in a long time. Not, he didn't really clarify on that, but that does not matter. Now once again, we'll be doing a replay review. This will not be cast in a... Uh, shout casting standpoint we are looking here for insights into bronze silver league terran and bronze silver league zerg so looking especially to the zerg side as i will be switching over to zerg in the uh in season seven which i guess i already did so it's kind of weird to say it that way so first trick here from the zerg player doing a extractor cancel tricks so the idea here is once the zerg players built up to the 10 drones and they've supply capped themselves they built they use one of their drones to build an extractor while it's building. They start another drone, and thus they're able to get 11 drones out while 11 drones out uh, with only one overlord. So Chaos Chrome doing that. So uh, he says he has, this is the first time playing Zerg. I'm guessing this is not the first time, as with Brad, playing at all. I'm guessing that he has played uh, this some against the computer. Spawning pool going down for Chaos Chrome pretty early uh, at about the 12 drone mark or so. So from the Zerg perspective, it looks like he's playing on some early aggression from Terran. And it took him a while, but he did start sending out these overlords across the map, which is very good, checking both directions. He's checking the cross position with this overlord and the close by, I don't know, I'm just, we'll call that the close by air position uh, with this overlord, and that is just fine. Terran over here is starting to build up my wall. I'm not sure whether, let's see, 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly... Um, double barrack start there if that's exactly super timely but regardless sitting out those overlords very good idea for chaos crew now his gas is finished and starting to uh, get gas out of that now be very interested to see what is his goal with this gas uh, a lot of zerg players will get just enough gas that they can research the metabolic speed boost for their zerglings um, and then they'll take those uh, drones off back to mining uh, minerals because they're looking for that early expansion Looks like he's building a spawning pool, so he looks like he's being very defensive here. Hasn't seen any warning signs from these overlords. He should be sending out a drone scout, or at least I would send a drone scout um, out to check out what's going on. Another scouting overlord, so going to be spreading out his overlords around the map. That's really good for him. Should be trying to get as much vision as possible over the entire map so he can see what shenanigans the Terran player is doing. It's very important that he gets in here very quickly to see if there's any kind of rush tactics that I'm doing as a Terran player. Either putting down some proxy barracks near the beginning of his base, which I haven't seen him... You know, he hasn't uh, come back over here to see if there's anything over there. Uh, he did miss this little area right here, but um, he's doing an okay job of trying to scout those things out. If I'm going to do some kind of proxy barracks trick, that's going to come really, really soon. Now, the other thing that he hasn't done... Um, or that he's looking out for is any kind of air attack if I'm going to go for some kind of rushed banshee build or something like that. So he'll want to know as soon as that happens, as he gets any kind of indication of that, whether that's double gas because they're going to need a lot of gas for those banshees, um, or he starts seeing some early starport actions here. So, But I think all of my timings are pretty normal if he was looking for that, but then of course this is Silver Bronze League, so not sure that if he saw some of those indicators that he would know that those things are coming. He does have an expansion here, which is a very good idea, coming down at the 5 minute mark, so keep that in the Zerg notebook that he put a hatchery down at the 5 minute mark. That seems kind of slow to me. Uh, I just have this feeling that he could have done that sooner, and I suppose if he didn't bother with this uh, defensive spine crawler and some of his other moves, he's got a lot of gas here, and I'm not sure he's really using that for anything. He hasn't even used it on that metabolic boost. Might as well go ahead and resource that. That's a very handy thing. I think his queen came out a little bit late, too. But you can see he's trying to keep himself from being supply blocked, and that's very good. That was a mistake that uh, Brad ran into a couple of times in the last cast. And uh, this game is a little bit longer than the last one, so I will not be doing an awkward pause in the middle of the game. Thank you, Abu Dhabi Sauce, for giving me that feedback on YouTube. I do read the YouTube comments, try to take those into consideration, me being a beginner caster. Okay, Chaos Chrome, awesome. Sending in that scouting overlord to see what's going on. It will take him so long to make it over there. Oh, and stopping here. Oh, boy. 
Only if we go just a little bit further. I think he's looking to see when I expand, but this would be the much more natural expansion, the much more natural direction to expand. And keeping these overlords at these different places, that's fine as well. Maybe scouting out to build his third. Don't forget that this is the typical base, third base for the Zerg player, as this base is quite a ways away and uh, protected by these rocks actually on both sides. So that's a very inconvenient third for the Zerg player. Nothing coming out here. A bunch of drones just hanging out down here. Could be... Just another example of the Silver and Bronze League players having to keep up with so much stuff going on. A bunch of Zerglings being built, but they do not have the metabolic speed boost that they could have had at this time had he started that research early. He had plenty of minerals and gas, and he still has plenty of minerals and gas. Queen just deciding to hang out here and trying to pretend to be a drone instead of using that spawn larva on this hatchery. And looks like he's selecting some things, and he wants to select these drones. Wants to send them on the mineral line, but he is not doing that. Instead, of just building a spine crawler and waiting. Everyone's just watching to wait to see that that is being built. More zerglings coming down to defend the second, but no pressure whatsoever coming out from myself, Key Phoenix. All right, Chaos Chrome can look inside and see what's going on. He sees a floating factory. That does not tell him very much. Ah, he can see a tech lab here that does not look like it's on three of the barracks. Okay, okay, so the question is based on that vision as we'll, we'll pop up his vision and we'll zip around and just see what he can see so he sees he sees a tech lab over here he sees a floating factory so the guess is there's probably a starport built already and of course at the eight minute mark you can always guess that there's no tech lab on these uh three barracks so i suppose you could think this might be a tech lab for barracks but you know really boy you see a tech lab over here and you're thinking it's got to be banshees or it's got it's got to be banshees man or, or i guess it could be a barracks with a tech lab to do some research um but it, it very well could be banshee and especially at this point the nine minute mark as a zerg player you better have an evolution chamber up which he does not have an evolution chamber up he really needs one of those and put down a couple of spore crawlers at least a few in each uh, base he does have two queens up here I'm not sure whether he did that for defense or just he's just doing stuff for fun but should be bringing this queen back here and she'd be mining with those two drones finally got out there but at this point there is some concern that that uh, could be some banshee play from the uh, zerg player now of course he hasn't done any vision over here into the natural so he might expect that i've you know expanded to a natural which is what i'm doing very soon is there a command center on its way already morphed into an orbital command at the nine minute mark and some marines coming out they're not going to be coming out for pressure though I know this because I've, I've watched this game a little bit before. They're coming out here just to guard this base. Now, the question is here at the 10-minute mark, is this really enough Marines to guard this base? I really don't think so. Over here in Zerg headquarters, we see a bunch of Banelings being built. I think these Banelings and these Zerglings could come in and just really do a number on this natural expansion with lots of these juicy little SCVs hanging out over here. So as much as um, Q Fe uh, sorry, Q Phoenix, as much as Chaos Chrome is not putting pressure on myself as a Terran player. He definitely could be, and he has no air defenses. I still do not see an evolution chamber in here at all. So once these Banshees get to a critical mass, three, three actually could be quite critical by itself and cloak being researched. So unless he upgrades to a uh, layer which he is working on, uh, he will not be able to detect cloaked units unless he has uh, spore crawlers and I do not I still know uh, evolution chamber out that's a big problem and it's not it's not just a big problem for that potential possibility that the Terran player uh, will be p bringing out banshees uh, evolution chamber very important as we mentioned in the last cast because those upgrades are just so powerful by having all of these units all those upgrades are just I think even more powerful even more useful even more important for the Zerg player than the Terran player and uh, even for the Protoss player and of course, if he's able to get the melee attack up to, I think, upgraded twice, I believe that's the magic number that allows two Banelings to kill a Marine. And so that's, if he's going to be relying on Banelings for defense, that's a very important thing for him to upgrade as well. So a bunch of Zerglings down here. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting here that we can look on the map is that there's kind of this magical spot down here in the middle at the bottom of this entrance ramp. This entrance ramp, this main area here serves as an entrance to the natural over here through this main big ramp, as an entrance to the main over here uh, through that main ramp as well. And this group, a group centered right here, can very quickly move over here to guard the uh, the natural expan the third expansion, uh, excuse me, which uh, Chaos Chrome has expanded to. So keeping up on the expansions, which is good, but he needs to be building drones, and he could be building drones if you look at all of those minerals that he's banked up. So just typical uh, macro slipping 
on the Silver Bronze League player side. Lots of Marines still being built up. And again, you know, Marines very strong, uh, especially in these large packs. Even in, actually in small numbers, they're very strong. But uh, boy, just a couple of Banelings could squash right through them if, of course, he had upgraded his melee twice, which he has not done at all. Okay, were you going to see any spore crawlers down here? I don't think he's had any vision still of any um, attacks coming from those Banshees, and now we're up to five Banshees, which really isn't that many. Um, I mean, honestly, at the 14 mark, we could have um, very many more Banshees than that, and I have been kept keeping up on my mineral and gas consumption, but uh, there really could be a lot more coming from the Terran player at this point. Uh, a second extractor thing being built as he's uh, realizing he didn't have very much gas, but he has lots of minerals. Let's check a look at that uh, at the larva. He's been keeping up on using the larva, but I really don't see... I'm, I Honestly, I haven't been checking that much. I'm guessing he hasn't really been keeping up on the larva injects. He could be having a ton of larva at this point, and he's behind in the supply count, which of course is bad, but there's been absolutely no pressure from these uh, players back and forth, so they've just been tanking up for some great big massive showdown, and that's actually in the Zerg's disadvantage. He really needs to be putting pressure on with these roaches and these um, zerglings and these banelings. I mean, I think he really could be building more units. Oh, he's stockpiling a ton of zerglings over here. But he really should be using these units. And the, uh, the reason why I think that is that, uh, you know, me being very, um, very uh, aggressive trying to make sure that the, uh, uh, very aggressive making sure that the, uh, uh, making sure that the overlords do not see my secret little plan. In fact, this plan is so secret, I don't even know where those banshees are. Are they already attacking? <laughs> oh, here they are. Here they are, hanging out. Now, you would have you would have thought that since I saw this replay a little bit earlier that I would have known this, but... But yeah, so, uh, looking at things from the Zerg perspective, he really needs to keep up. I, I really w would think at this point that he should move out with that army and put on some pressure and force me to make a move because we've just been sitting here building and building and building and building and building you know from an obs uh, from an observer's standpoint I mean there's lots of things that we can look at as far as the the play of the two players but there just really isn't a lot going on and um, definitely I know I can say in retrospect myself playing this game that I was being very defensive uh, waiting to move out I had a big army I decided to leave the big army back at home cloak him with these banshees and see what was going to happen and he does have an evolution chamber had plenty of time to make spore crawlers didn't do that and finds himself in this terrible position if we look at his vision of being hit with a massive amount of cloak banshees that he can't even see now these infestors could put do a fungal growth on the um, on the banshees and you can kind of see on the map you can see this kind of you know the quiver of the predator ish cloaking field from these banshees but the banshees are just going to be able to win this game and at this point i would highly expect to see a counterattack from chaos chrome but again you know first game he's just oh wow lots of banelings here so this will be able to just wipe out the almost completely marine army and that is what is moving out across the field so one of the um one of the challenges, I guess one of those key decision points from Zerg players, and when you're playing Zerg, playing against Zerg, is that the massive army move out, the massive attack from uh, Banshees or something like that can trigger a counter, um, can trigger a large response, a, a massive counterattack from the opponent. And I decided to do both as a Terran player, and I'm stimming everybody there, which is a terrible move, because that damages everybody in the group, even the players that aren't stimming, and really my Marines could have done some stutter step there to try to avoid being destroyed. And look at that, three Marauders surviving that entire thing, um, wasting uh, Bane lanes on them, which is totally unnecessary. Uh, but yeah, so you can see right there that the ground army from Chaos Chrome was actually really strong, with, especially with all those Bane lanes and the fact that my entire army was made of Marines. Very, very strong. I think he could have put a lot of pressure um, on my natural expansion and forced me kind of into a defensive posture. I mean, if his Bane lanes roll into my natural expansion, kill all of my units, kill all those marines, or put up a really good fight, I would have been forced to keep these banshees at home unless I want to go for a base race. And, you know, that's kind of the the position that happens in a lot of these Zerg versus Terran games is you get into these base race situations where, um, you know, one you just build up, build up, build up, build up, and then one player says, all right, I'm going to do something crazy. And, you know, to a certain extent, yes, I, I think these banshees were, I, I suppose, kind of cheesy to a certain extent. But when you look at the time that's passed, I mean, I could have gone for two different strategies and the Banshees were just one of them um, at, at this point. So I'm not, you know, on one hand, you, you kind of want to say it's cheesy, but on the other hand, it's like, well, but we we gave each other so much time, we could have done anything. I mean, he could have done cloaked roaches, right? You know, straight up into my natural and I would have 
you know, I had no detection. I don't think I had any um, sensor towers or missile turrets or anything. No raven, nothing. So I wouldn't have been able to see uh, burrowed roaches or anything like that either. So, um, and I had absolutely no uh, defenses here in the main. He could have plopped down, uh, put down a, a, a night of swarm into the back of my main. I did have some uh, units, uh, some missile turrets back here for defense against for mutilus, but you know, really not, nothing much back here in the main. And if you look after that massive engagement, I mean, our supply counts went down quite a bit. And if you look at the, uh, you know, my worker supply, I had 40 supply tied up in workers, so you know, most of my supply I think were in those banshees, which he did a pretty good job cleaning those up. And you can see right here, he had, I think, just well, he had five sport crawlers, that was quite a bit. Um, but it doesn't take that many spore crawlers to negate or even out a banshee attack. And so um, now at, at this point, he's just, I'm not sure what he's doing. He's just kind of waiting around, uh, was my conclusion from before. But it gives me some chance, a little bit of opportunity to talk about what what, uh, what happened there. So um, I think I went for a really big gamble. In, in a sense, it wasn't cheese, it was gamble, really. Because all those resources, all that gas, all that time spent on those banshees could have been on something else. And you saw how fragile that marine, you know, it was a lot of marines, admittedly, but it was a very fragile marine army. And he was able to take that out very quickly and still have an army uh, remaining, not not the drones, taking out the drones. <laughs> he still had a, a queen, some roaches. I think he had some infestors, not sure where they went. And he had some uh, zerglings. I'm assuming he had, I, I think he had a handful of banelings left at the end of that engagement, but he had something left, you know, and I think at that point, all I had left were a bunch of Marines standing back here. So um, what that says to me is that the Banshees were kind of the, um, the thing that kind of tipped tip things in, in, in my favor. Um, and if you would have looked at, at how he had managed his resources and stuff, you know, that again, though, I guess I just come back to five spore crawlers, right? Took out what, but like eight banshees, um, five spore crawlers, you know, and a couple of queens. And he could have had those five. Uh, I, I don't think he needed five. I think he could have had three with a couple of queens down here. He had a couple of queens up here, but no spore crawlers. If he would have just put a couple of spore crawlers in each mineral line, he had plenty of time to do that. He would have been able to shut those down, or even mutilus, actually mutilus, because the cloak does run out on those um, on those banshees. So just a handful of mutilus, a handful, three or four, and um, and an overseer. And he did have a lair. Um, it, you know, he had time to get a lair to get an overseer. So one overseer, four mutilus. Uh, Banshees would have been negated. His ground army was equivalent or maybe even better than mine. Um, I, I think it was actually kind of an even game and it was that gamble on the Banshees and he didn't call me on it. You know, he didn't, or I guess he called me on it. He said, I'm not going to build any defenses for Banshees and we'll see what happens. Um, and that did not work out for him. Now, I, I'm going to take a peek here. Okay, we got a couple minutes. Let's, let's just speed this thing up. So, uh, yeah, as far as the replay review at this point, I'm just checking expansions. And I suppose we can slow things down and, and just, just to note to say, um, I should have to speed things up. Man. It was a long time. You know, he really made me he really made me wait a long time. I think this was the last building that I had to kill, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, you know, at this point, I was really assuming that there was a hidden expansion somewhere. So I'm checking, like, every single expansion. But this, this is it. So... Um, and I, I guess just a final note on this game of all the notes to have in a game is when you're done, when you ha when you feel that you are done with the game, that there's no way that you can win, please, please be, do the responsible thing <laughs> and GG. Um, so that, and you know, okay. And these Marines, come on, just let's go ahead and finish this one, one Marine. That's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. And uh, let's move into that post game. Okay, so kind of an interesting game. Uh, again, although there wasn't a lot of action at the beginning of the game, um, I think it did kind of give us some insight into those, to the balance between uh, the army control and your tech decisions and scouting. Just scouting is so important, especially for the Zerg player who's playing on that, that reaction style, right? Chaos Chrome stayed back in his base, expanded to a bunch of places. He's really relying on that reactionary style, which means that he... He needs to have a lot of scouting so he knows what's going on. So he knows that the Terran player is staying on two bases. He can expand to three, four, five bases. Uh, you know, he had plenty of time to research upgrades, plenty of time to build spore crawlers just in case. And that's something as a Zerg player coming up. Now I'm going to try to remember is that, you know, boy, by the nine minute mark, um, you know, we've done some uh, test runs uh, on the YouTube channel with uh, Banshees. And if you're really pushing for it, you can definitely make 
uh, four cloak banshees by the nine minute mark so if it's any time past that nine minute mark uh, there could really be something coming for you you know as a zerg player so you, you've just got to be ready for that and especially down in the silver bronze league you got to expect those banshees you know maybe at the upper leagues you're like well banshees are just so expensive they tie up the star port you got to use a tech lab you know in some cases you research uh, cloaking and all of that can just be negated by you know a handful of queens one spore crawler a, you know one overseer can completely negate the um, can completely completely negate the uh, the cloaking ability, and uh, you know so you just got to be ready for that as Zerg. You know, put down a couple of spore crawlers, <laughs> and definitely uh, leave the game when uh, when the game is over, and uh, you believe for yourself that there's there's no way for you to win, and especially after all of your hatcheries are destroyed, you have nothing, and you don't have enough minerals to build another hatchery. <laughs> Please just go ahead and leave, unless you're going to go for a base race. Uh, well, with that being said, uh, Ghosty Dad signing out. Check out the blog, ghostydad.blogspot.com, and of course my Twitter at Ghosty Dad. See you guys later.